everybody. <laughs> Take two. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Black. Remind him, I'm Ball. And this is the actual follow up video to the uh, Cassie J. <laughs> Sure it's, not Casey, sure it's not Casey J. <laughs> Apparently there's some uh <laughs> there's some contingency on that. But <clears throat> as far as uh okay, so the real reason why I was showing that video is because when I first saw it, at first I was overwhelmed with a sense of dread. And the reason why I was overwhelmed with a sense of dread was because she put it so well, it was so nicely worded, so easy to digest, and anybody who was willing to listen to her speak would have it's like there's it's so hard to miss. And it's the fact that it's uh it's the fact that it's five years later now. I think like she did the video in 2016, the TED Talk was in 2017, is now five years later. And it just seems like the, it seems like nothing happened when it, when the answer was word, when the step towards the solution, her Ted talk is not the answer, <clears throat> but it was a proper step towards a better future. And it was completely disregarded. And I couldn't shake the feeling that it can't really be worded much better than that. So I was making this video the I was making this video because are we doomed? I don't think we are. But as far as this conversation goes, as far as the whole gender uh war going on between men and women trying to come find common ground, given how the me given how media handles it and given how like the two sides in the battle are handling it. Are we just kind of doomed to spiral into oblivion? I can't think that that is our end goal, that that's going to be our reality. You don't think so? Not at all. What at do you think would happen? Time, at one point in time in our history, we were on the same page and we lived in harmony as men and women apparently let them tell it we were not on the same page one side was being oppressed by the other that's the narrative these days but we all at least you and I both know that that's not the way things work the way that the media portrays it and the communities that have a certain agenda that they want to push forward <clears throat> are going to tell you one story and and try to get things wrong all to better their own ideologies Right. I believe that what do I let's see? Hope and beliefs. Like I don't think things are gonna get so devolved so devolve into such a degree that we have just completely separated ourselves from each other or one side is completely eradicated. It's like that is a dystopia. I can't imagine that anyone anyone in any position of power at all would even condone. It's like someone you're saying say, that you don't think somebody in a position of power would, would you don't it. you're saying that you don't think somebody in a position of power would try to make a move to eradicate an entirety of a people? I do. And you saw how successful that guy was. He's like, yes, killed many people. But we are not even close to this stage. You just need somebody with the radical mindset to actually make it to a position of power like that. I guess and that's the th that's the thing. I feel like I'm watching the longest con. And it hurts me to see it because the person being con is our women. Is both people. Hmm? Is both people, not just women, but the no, people. No, no, no. Let me let me let, hold up. Let me let me finish what I mean. I feel like I'm watching the longest con and the victims are our women because that's who the media panders to. The, it's, <clears throat> it's like basically uh back back when i was younger 
they had these conversations that women would have without men, whether it be in the women's restroom, this, that, and the third, they had their girl talks. And, you know, there were parts of that conversation that were not picked up by men. And, you know, those, those ideas were able to develop in private, right? Men did the same. Uh, I think they like to call it like girl talk on one end and like locker room talk on the other end. It's like men had these conversations, barbershop talk. They had uh, these conversations where the women were completely out and what went on in those conversations were not divulged to the women. But now, excuse me, with social media and mainstream media picking it up, uh, the information is leaking out and people are starting to be more upfront with how they act up and, uh, you know, more, uh, expressive in how they feel. And you think that that would eventually lead to the point where we're separated entirely? I think, well, okay. You can see the, you can see the radicals, the ones that the like radicals, a very small minority, right? It's like, you can see the radicals. So it's like, it would be like catching lightning in a bottle. Once again, look at the person that I brought up as an example. <laughs> I've seen him. That's lightning in a bottle. You're looking at lightning in a bottle. And he was not very successful. It's like a complete eradication. Success, like, oh, see, what? success is subjective. You're saying that he wasn't successful based on what he wanted to do. Yeah, but boy, he did he make, make it goal. far. He did. There's no doubt about that. A lot of people died because of him. I get that. What I'm saying is, though, he's not successful. But back to what I was saying. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Before that, before that, I, again, don't think that anyone could get to that point. There are two, for one thing, it's like men and women. There is a lot of us. It's a half and half sort of deal. I'm not thinking we're going to get to this point. I hope not. I'm not thinking that we're going to get to this point back to what I was saying. I feel like I'm watching the longest con and it's at the, and it's at the expense of our women because that's who mainstream media panders to. So whatever bad ideas or let's say just something that's just incorrect that women are thinking, whether it be coming up in girl talk or in social media mainstream media will take that and amplify it the same way that they took what they were saying and amplified it when they were attacking Cassie J for the film that she made, because it went against what the women were thinking in their spaces. It's going to be really hard to try and correct that. It feels like I'm watching people be abused. And that's why I ask is like, are we doomed? Because I don't really see a way to correct that. I don't see a way to fix it, especially when somebody who used to play for their side of the team had her eyes open and was able to word the correction so beautifully to have it just to have people spit in her face in mass. And you fear that we're doomed from that. I feel like I'm trying is like, I'm trying to have hope, but and I don't see it being worded any better. I don't see it being worded any better than that. And it didn't work. So what's going to happen if we continue down this road? So long as stuff like what Cassie J put up doesn't get burnt destroyed and and it gets pushed forward in the future something for our generation our next generations in order to absorb into their own learnings and their own upbringings i imagine that at some point we will find a different point of equilibrium where we can actually get along and get away from this whole idea of men versus women this whole stupid idea that there's a war going on between these two genders, between two sides of the same species. I feel like there's going to be some heavy loss before they figure it out. 
we are at a point right now where it's less of a loss and just more like two people in the same room just not just looking away from each other uh you wouldn't really see the results until it's like i mean we're kind of looking in the results now i mean we're children we're children of the last generation that started this it's been several generations that this sort of stuff has been boiling over that's what i'm saying you're all it's like you're saying that we're like nothing's really going to happen you're already seeing the results of them making the mistake but they have to register that it's a mistake in order to fix it i am saying i'm hopeful because i think things will reach an equilibrium where we actually see each other as part of the same group and where will it come people. from if they stay hard-headed and nobody actually knows better especially when it's like all right so it's if nobody if if the people that didn't know better end up being all that's left where does it come from how do you get to the answer if the only people that are left are the ones that don't know better let me let me let me try and like set it let me try and set it up better it's like uh it's like saying p is like there's gonna be people out there that know that men and women are both needed equally sure there has to be right well if it becomes rule of thumb on the female side that they don't need men and they raise their children by themselves with the stuff that they know and those t and those children cling to what their to what their mothers teach them and that it is that men are expendable and that they don't need them and the rate and the uh, the rate the birth rate of uh sons to daughters is dead set how it is there's more women than men several generations down the line you have women who still who will still believe what those women believed and you will have men that were raised by those women view on the stipulation that those women are even having children anymore because we are finding it more and more as the days go by as the years go by more and more men are wising up and not having kids with these women anymore and if these if there's no more children to have these sort of ideals it's like the women that had these ideas are not having children they can't push it off onto the next generation they got the sperm only banks that, if anyone's gonna actually put a bank uh sperm banks into those i mean shit you guys i know some people have uh what was it there's one case i heard about where a sperm bank donor a uh, donor to the sperm bank was almost hit with child support because <gasps> the woman tried to claim him as the father which technically would be true, but since she got it from a sperm bank, it seems kind of shitty. You're lying. What? I am not. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Since most states use genetics to determine legal parentage, the sperm donor of a child conceived through intercourse is likely to be considered the parent by the court if no other father claims the child. Therefore, <clears throat> the donor would be afforded parental rights and be obligated to pay child support. But that one says through intercourse. Right. That... <laughs> At first, I read the bold, and I was like, you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But while you're looking at this, it's like what I'm saying here, what I hope would happen is that those with these ideals, these warlike ideals, 
aren't able to even will eventually reach a point where they aren't able to pass on their ideals what you think they'll tucker themselves out or something i don't think any man would want to touch them you um i th mm, I, mm, mm, mm. <clears throat> my what? bad hold on I th I'm trying to word it correctly I think you need to um, reacquaint yourself with our people <laughs> I, th I think you need to put yourself around some men <laughs> and see how they act <laughs> I feel sorry for the ones who do fall into that trap well you see that's the thing you're saying that you're saying that I don't, you don't think men would touch them, but that's the thing is the manipulation in the approach. Normally it's like, I've seen many a men get with if a girl. I've met the girl when they got with her and she was elegant. It's like, she was wonderful. I was like, oh my God. Awesome. You found somebody that's lovely. And then as soon as they get locked in, their real version comes out. It's like, you can't fault the dude. Be it's like, you can't fault the dude because the manipulation was on point. They showed what they wanted him to see. And now they got what they wanted. So now he's expendable. Manipulation is a beast. It is. I'm still going to be hopefully optimistic that those ideals will eventually die out when it starts to become apparent to the next generation that the only thing that leads to is pain, suffering, and hate. You, that you would need people to openly admit that that's what it lived, what, that's what it led to. But and there are people that do. Cassie J being one of them. Who was this other woman that was one. talking about this? Like way back in two thousand and six, in the publications. Nora now Vincent I want you to com but this. I want you to compare the amount of people that are openly admitting that. To the, to the amount of people that constantly say, I'm just fine. I grew up just fine. I was raised just fine. I made out raising children all on my own just fine. Just fine. People aren't willing to admit that they made a mistake. People aren't willing, really, people aren't ready, ready and willing to admit that they messed up and that they should have made better choices. They'll stick to their guns more often than not. And we yes. have Cassie J as a good example. She is the outlier. She's the one that actually not, she is like, she was able to see she that she like was messing up and she corrected it. And she had a platform to put it out there for everyone to see. And even with her being the face of the correction, they didn't want to admit it then either. Right. Even putting her up on the news was not enough to really get it out there. It's like, he's like, Nope, I'm just fine. And my views are just fine. We keep allowing the loud hurt and the hard headed to set the parameters. But those loud, those loud few are still only a few not everyone thinks the same way that these people do there are still right, people out there that i keep trying, trying to lead you to life. the i keep trying to lead you to like the bad point because they are the few they are few but they're loud and that's the point because the loud hurt and the hard-headed go viral the loud hurt and the hard-headed are is like are seen for views and ratings by major media and the loud hurt and the hard headed will be the ones to come in contact with the children that don't know no better through social media people know better right now but the way information spreads and the way that the beast of media works trying to uh get the most clicks and ratings off the most outlandish stuff Children are going to see this as the world if they don't have somebody there actively correcting it. It's a big gamble. Some of those children that see this 
and think for themselves is like, this sounds like garbage. I think I'm going to go this way instead. Right. I was one of them. But there are a lot that will follow in with the zeitgeist. And that's where my worry lies, because eventually the ones that do know better get old and they die. And then things change and then we must learn to adapt to this uh, new environment. And that's why I was asking the question, are we doomed? Is it possible to still turn it well, around? What do you mean? But what do you mean by doomed then? It's like what what exactly are you worried that's going to be doomed? Are we going to be separated? Is one side going to be completely eradicated? Well, no, I'm not looking at eradication, but I do see being spread so thin and separated to such a degree as something that makes us easily movable to any type of combined front. And that is something that I worry about for every individual that wants to remain an individual. And, and it's, it's crazy how it spirals in on itself. If people are able to band together, some people would say that, uh, we, hmm, that we have kind of a hive mindset, not so much. So if you just band yourself together on simple morals that make yourself immovable, but it depends on what those morals are. And it becomes an entirely different conversation at that point. But yeah. if you are, if you manage to divide people up based on religion, based on politics, then based on race, then based on sexuality, based on gender, eventually these people become spread so thin and you would, and some people would actually believe that like, well, this is freedom. It's like, you are your own person and you're your own individual that, you know, these things make you up this, that, and the third, but nobody is standing together and nobody can really hear anybody. So the overwhelming voice that is going over everybody, that's all they have. Cause no one else can hear the person next to them anymore. You gotta find some common ground with these people. You have to realize that your is like uh your sexuality is irrelevant. You have to realize that both genders are equally needed. You have to realize that the color of a person's skin is no more is no more uh relevant than the color of his eyes. You have to understand that these two parties are giving us the runaround and that there are issues on both sides that need to be addressed. Like pushing forth that the individual is important, but the community that you live in is also important as well. You can't separate yourself from that entirely. Something along those lines. Yeah. He's like, Phil is like, live your life, but you have, it's like, but you have to facilitate a life worth living. Like you can look all the, at all these people across the fence in their own little sections. You don't need to see them as enemies. Right. It's like, why does life, why does life, ref, why does, why do you need trivial conflict in life? I don't, it's like, and that and that's the thing. It comes across like like we need trivial conflict in life, but I don't. I honestly don't. And I'm and there are times where I try to figure out well what's wrong with me? Why am I the outlier on this? I don't need trivial conflict to live. I wish that there I it's like I wish that all of this was sewed up and I could just focus on my own interests. I think it might be boredom. Huh? That people are just so bored with what's going on around them that the idea of getting behind a movement to go behind an ideal that makes it seem like it's a good thing is just to alleviate boredom. Um, I feel like if ah, jeez, I mm, I wanted to say that I believe that if it was boredom, people wouldn't go as hard as they do. Like if it was okay, okay, okay. Like some siblings fight when they're bored 
like you know it won't be anything serious but you know they're you know they'll rib each other up and they you know they'll like you know just be it'll be like little petty antagonizing each other just because it's like y'all are bored y'all need y'all need something to do while y'all are bored and then it starts to turn into a challenge well you see but grown folk first of all shouldn't be acting like that in the first place yeah but we got grown kids <laughs> We do. That's the thing. That's the thing. That was, it's like, that was an entirely different thing. You, there is nothing in this world that will make you grown. There is absolutely nothing in this world that will make you grown. Paying your bills will not, mm, paying your bills will not make you grown. Having sex will not make you grown. Having a baby will not make you grown. There is nothing in this world that will make you grown time will keep ticking and your body will get old but there is nothing in this world that will inherently make you grown that is something that you have to work on yourself you it's like that has to come from the you have to work on that on the inside there is nothing in the outside world that will make you grown So to all those people out there that's like, I pay my phone bill, I'm grown. No. So I have a baby, I'm grown. No. I got three kids and a mortgage, I'm grown. No. It's like, no, you're just doing, you're just doing stuff that adults tend to be seen doing. That does not make you grown. You're doing other shit like antagonizing your neighbor and trying to start a fight for no real good reason. That's childish. So yeah, mm. so when you you asked me what do I mean when I'm asking are we doomed? And that's what it, that that's that's really what it is. Being sp- is like we're being spread so thin that anybody that is standing together could bowl over us in mass. And I worry. But I would like to hear other people's takes on this. Please comment. What do you think of what we said? Please give a timestamp if you're going to talk about something specific. I know we can talk about a lot in these videos too. But, um, get off topic so easily. Right. But please, uh, comment, like, subscribe, ring the bell. Because uh, we, if we end up, if people do comment, we'll end up probably responding to the comments, trying to keep this, trying to keep the uh, conversation going. Please ring the bell and subscribe so you know when it's continued. Because we might end up talking to you directly, and we would like to keep the conversation going, an actual conversation, not under the guise of any type of manipulation, not under the guise of any type of gaslighting, not under the guise of all of this stuff that we see happening in mass. Give us is like give us a shot. <laughs> You give us a chance to be wrong. Let's mm-hmm. have a conversation about that. What'd you say? Say, give us a chance to be wrong. Let's have a conversation about it. Right. <laughs> but I'm Black Genesis. I'm Ball. And it's this long. Thanks for listening. And um, hopefully I'm wrong. Like, hopefully we're not doomed. Have a nice night, wherever you are, and whenever it is night time, (laughs) where you are.